All right guys, now that my Galaxy Z Fold 7 is here, I have posted my unboxing and first impressions video. It's time to fully set this device up and there are a handful of settings that absolutely have to be changed and that's what we're doing in this video. These are my top a handful of tips. I don't know how many. We'll count them at the end and I'll put it in the title. But these are my top tips to do immediately on your Galaxy Z Fold 7. So starting with One UI 7, Samsung did something with their notification shade and quick settings that I do not like and we're going to reverse it. Just so we're clear about what has changed. Basically right now, if you swipe down on the right hand side of your screen, you're going to get your quick settings. If you swipe down on the left hand side, you're going to get your notifications and you can actually swipe horizontally back and forth between these. Basically, they've separated the two. I don't like that and I don't think that a lot of people <laughs> like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little pencil icon and then we're going to click on panel settings and then change this to together. And now whenever I swipe down anywhere, I get some quick settings and my notifications. I swipe down again and I get the rest of my quick settings. This is how it used to be and that's how it's going to be. The next thing that we need to change is we need gesture navigation. By default, for some reason, Samsung is still doing three button navigation. It's 2025, guys. Let's get with the program. So let's jump into our settings. We're gonna go into display and then we're gonna look for navigation bar. Once we click on this, we can change this from buttons to swipe gestures. That's gonna free up some space at the bottom of your screen. And now when you swipe up, you're going to go home. After I click that okay button, now I can go home. Swipe up and hold, gets you to your recent screens. We're gonna talk about the recent screens more here in just a little bit. It's also going to map circle to search to this bar down here at the bottom. If you press and hold that, your screen's going to glow and then you can circle anything on your screen to copy text, search things, search images. Very, very useful feature, one of my favorites. Now, while you're in your settings, you might actually click on that search button to just type in what you're looking for. Very useful, but you know what's not as useful to me? Samsung's built-in keyboard. I know that they have some cool AI features with their little AI button here, but man, I just prefer Gboard. No matter how much I try, I cannot get used to using their keyboard. So we're gonna go to the Play Store and install Gboard. Once that is installed, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna go through these simple steps. Enable in settings, let's go ahead and toggle that. Click on OK, we can now go back select input method, selecting Gboard, and we are all done. Now, once we're in here, under text correction, make sure that don't suggest offensive words is turned off. Otherwise, you're gonna tell people to go duck themselves, and that's not fun. Once you start installing more applications, you might notice that your app drawer is an absolute chaotic mess. I don't know why they default to this way, but you can fix it. Click on these three buttons down here, click on sort and change this to alphabetical order. One thing you might not like if you're a long time Samsung user is now it's going to be scrolling vertically, but at least it's going to be in alphabetical order and it's gonna do that on its own. Something else that Samsung does by default is using a setting called cover screen mirroring. Basically how this works is, as you see on my screen here, this is basically one page and this is another page. When the device is closed, you just see one page at a time and you swipe back and forth between them. But maybe you want the inner screen and the cover display to have completely independent layouts. If you long press anywhere open, anywhere available on your home screen and go into settings, we are looking for cover screen mirroring and you can turn that off and then have two independent layouts. Back in our settings in display, once again, there is an option here that says taskbar. There are a couple of different things to look at here. Once you switch to the three button navigation, you may be wondering where did my taskbar go? Well now, by default, if you do a short swipe up, that taskbar is going to appear. But you can also set this to be stay on screen. So it's gonna be there all the time. Whichever way you prefer it, you can have it that way. In that same section, continue apps on cover screen. This is actually really useful. By default, it's set to swipe up to continue. It's probably where you're gonna want it, but I'm gonna show you this anyways. How this works is if you're running anything on your inner screen and you close it, you should briefly see a little up arrow that you can swipe up on and then that app will just continue operating on your cover screen rather than simply locking your device. If you want it to always lock your device, you can change it to never. Or if you want it to always continue automatically, you can set that to always. Here's a pretty important one. Underneath advanced features and labs, 
Turn on multi-window for all apps. Some apps don't want to be a pop-up window. They don't want to be in split screen. You can make them do it anyways. Same section underneath multi-window. These are big ones. Turn on swipe for split screen and turn on swipe for pop-up view. How do these things work? Well, swipe for split screen. Take two fingers and swipe in on the side. Everything slides over and then you can pick one of your recent applications or an application from your app drawer. We will just do the Play Store and now that is running side by side. Let's go ahead and just swipe this back over so that it's closed. And now what you can do with the pop-up view is swipe from the corner of the screen in, just like you're seeing there, and now this is running in a pop-up window that can be sort of pinned, tossed off to the side, brought back out again, really, really useful. And one more thing in here, show multi-window menu with one window. So if we turn this on, you'll see this little line that appears at the top of the screen. Now, typically you only would see that if you were actually in split screen. You can see one here and one here, but we've just turned it on to be there all the time. What is that for? Well, if you tap it, you see different options like floating window or split screen. So it just basically gives you two more really easy ways to get into those modes. If you back out one level, you're gonna to wanna to turn on one-handed mode as well. This device is very big and it's very tall. It's hard to reach the top of that screen. So what you can do now is simply swipe down on that bottom bar and everything sort of shrinks down and it becomes much, much easier to reach the top of the screen. When you're done, just tap on the outside of that area and it'll go back to its normal size. I mentioned that we're gonna do something with this recent screen because I just don't think it takes or makes good enough use of that large screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the store. This is where you can download different applications, basically Samsung's own Play Store. And we're gonna install an application called GoodLock right after we update the store. Once you get this application installed, we're going to open it up. And I believe the module we need is Home Up. We're gonna click on this install button and install that module. After that, we can jump into the Home Up module turn it on and we are looking for task changer. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And you can now change to different types. I personally really like this grid view because it's just going to use that screen real estate better. By default now, Samsung is using Gemini with their power button. If you long press that power button, Gemini is going to appear and it's gonna start listening to you and you can do all your AI tasks right there. But if you don't like that, Jump into your settings, go to advanced features, and then side button, and you can change that to Bixby or to just be your power button if you want that to be what it does instead. And then last but not least, let's customize this thing just a little bit more. Let's long press again on your launcher. We're gonna go into wallpaper and style, and we're gonna change that wallpaper. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a wallpaper. Let's go to generative. I really, really love these features. You're gonna pick sort of a different category. From a category down here at the bottom, I am impartial to soft focus. And then you can change some of these words. So we're gonna go from poppies to just leaves. And instead of orange, we'll do blue because who wouldn't love to see some blue leaves? And what it's gonna do now is it's going to generate that image. It's gonna be one of a kind. Even if the same words are used by someone else, your wallpaper is going to look unique. It's going to be only yours. And you can keep doing this, try different presets and different words until you find a wallpaper that you like. Let's click on set. You can set it to your home screen and your lock screen. And when you're done, you should also go into color palette and make sure that's turned on. And it's gonna actually grab colors from that wallpaper and apply them throughout your system. Now you should also know that when you close your phone at that point, you are going to still have whatever wallpaper you last had on that cover display. You're gonna to need to actually go in and set that separately. Even if you don't have cover display mirroring on, it still has separate wallpapers. So you would have to go in and do the exact same thing again. I think it should have, yes, that wallpaper that you just generated, it should have it there for you. Although it's being cropped in a way where that's not particularly helpful. All right, guys, looking back at this, I count 14 tips. So that was my top 14 settings to change immediately upon getting your Galaxy Z Fold 7. If you have any big ones that you think other people need to know about, drop it in the comments down below. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.